Morning everyone and um, welcome back to the Thinker. Um, it's another beautiful day. We're in the workshop. Um, if you saw the last video or the last few videos, we're building a fabulous courtyard outside. It's an out to make a fantastic outdoor living space and we need a smoker come barbecue to go in it. We think every every decent patio should have a smoker and barbecue. So in the last video, part one, um, we got the main bit built, we've got the burner and the firebox, the smoker, the smoker travels through the thing and out the valve at the other end and up a flue. It can also be used as a normal barbecue by putting coals or wood or whatever in this bit and got a grill on top. Um, I've done a little bit on it since the last video, I've put the strip on the front um, I'm going to get strip, some strips on the sides, make a grate for this, um, fix the grills in place and so on and so on. Then we need to look at a stand. So let's get on with it. So I'll show you inside. Um, that's where the grill's going to go. On this side, I want to use a torch because it's dark. Is where the hot plate's going to go, I think. There's the inlet for the, um, the heat from the firebox. These two rails need to be welded in place because um, they're just balanced at the minute, it took me about an hour. <laughs> and that's where the smoke exits through the chimney. So I'm going to get these tacked in place um, first, I think. Right, so scratch that. The bastards are still in absorb mode, won't be long. Um, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to cut up. I'm going to need to make a grate to put in here to sit the charcoal and the wood burner thing on. There's two air holes in the front. The grate's going to sit above it, so it'll pull the air through and up through me, me fire. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. I've got a load, a load of threaded rod that I've got for another job which I never use. I'm never going to use it in a lifetime. So I'm going to use that to make up a, a grate for in here. Right, so this is going to be my grate for my firebox. I've just cut two length whites and then a load going across um, just for charcoal and the wood to sit on. Um, when I've got enough power, I'm just going to dot dot spot each one onto it and um, yeah we'll have a grate. I'm going to get all the bits made first um, I'm going to need some handles on them um, for handles I'm going to use almond um, wood one on the barbecue lid itself and one on the firebox probably use this small one for the firebox so I'm going to have a look what I can do with these um, if I can get the bark off or what I'm going to slice them up first and try and find one um, or a couple of pieces that don't have splits in them because it's been out in the sun, it's very dry, it's split, but it's almond, it's pretty strong. Right, okay, we're doing well. I'm going to use that for the handle of my barbecue. Um, I'm going to leave the bark on because it will fall off in time. And I'm going to use that for the handle of my firebox. Um, that's smaller, that's why it's got a small handle, this is bigger, that's why it's got a bigger handle. Um, I'm going to use a bit of flax. So I'm going to cut it and put it like that so the handle's down here so even when the lid's wide open the handle will be sticking up above it so you can still reach it without burning yourself oh that's my plan so I think yeah next bit I'll get these metal bits cut right so there's the first one done that's the handle for the barbecue lovely wood inside when the bar comes off it's going to be beautiful all I've done is rounded these corners off here and then that will go on there welded on like that lovely um, right um, make one for the, the firebox the same only a bit a little bit smaller and um, there's a miniature version for the firebox obviously when I paint it I'll take the wooden bits off um, quite cute though isn't it um, but well perfect <laughs> love it so I think that's everything I've got my grate for my firebox on here waiting to be welded up I've got my handle for my firebox there waiting to be welded on um, I've got my grills in place in there with two rails for it to sit on waiting to be welded on um, I've got two I've put a strip on the inside here and I've bolted it through the hinges to, as a seal on the top I've put this one on the front as a seal for there I need to put two side strips on but I'm going to bolt them on because um, I think it'll be easier and look better perhaps but I don't want to do that because if it, it took me ages to get this balanced and set up inside until I welded that up um, then I think um, the, it's complete, it's just going to need a stand um, 
happy days, we'll be barbecuing this weekend. Um, it's Thursday today, and the guys are coming to do the patio on Saturday. He said it'll take him a day, um, but I'll give him two, or even three, but his shop will be done by Sunday afternoon. We can get this puppy um, smoking away in our new courtyard. So all that remains now is to just weld it all together then we can get these strips on and look at the stand. Um, the batteries aren't quite, they're still absorbing, but as soon as they float, we can go. Um, happy days, fantastic, I can't wait. Right, so we're off to join the mobile welding car. You can drag it around with you. First, I'm gonna get this drill in place because it's making me nervous, but it took me so long to get it in the right position. So, let's go. Fantastic, and um, that's done. Next, I'm going to get the handle on the firebox, which is this, this little thing here. It's going on up there like that. Um, excellent. I've just got him held exactly where I want him with a couple of magnets, so let's get it glued together. By no means least, um, the grate for the for the fire pit. Crack on! There it is. Pretty heavy duty, funky thing. Um, right, we can see if it fits. The handle works anyway. Come on, get in. He's in. Absolutely smashing, happy days. So the last thing to get these finished is to just put two strips on there. I've got this really funky tape measure, which has got, it's measured and calibrated on both sides. So you can actually bend this round and um, still get your measurement. Like so, absolutely brilliant it is. Um, right, so, 26 centimetres, two of, and um, yeah, we're rocking and rolling today. Right, so the cut, all I'm gonna do, I think, yeah, that's all right. I'm gonna put a bolt in the bottom and then tighten that up and then slowly try and bend it, bend it round. I can't really think of an easier way of doing it because it's quite thick metal. Um, so we'll give that a go and see what happens. First of all, I'm gonna stick him on there, drill a pilot hole through, and then make that bigger, then put a bolt in, tighten it up, and then see if I can bend him round. Let's do it. Yeah, all right, this is a little bit trickier than I thought. Um, the metal's really thick, I should've used some tether stuff, but I haven't got any. Um, the only way I can do it is by heating it up with the mat torch, red hot, and then it bends, as you can see, I've got the second one in. So, get it warm. There it is. I was gonna say, they can't be stuck if it's liquid. <laughs> right, I get this next bolt in, and then we've nearly done one side. You can see already, it's bent down. Um, super, right. One more to do on this side, and um, we can. I'll get the other side done. So I get that all done, and come back to you when it's finished. Uh, right, excellent. It's done. Um, it's all functioning, working lovely. Um, I've just got to get the rest of the loose paint off it, 
Um, so I'm just going to flip it onto its side and do that quickly. Um, then it's ready for painting and then we can start on the stand. Okay, so I'm off with the stand and uh, immediately I've come into a problem. Um, I've cut two lengths of angle that it's going to make the top of the stand. Um, and the way those curved brackets that I had, if you saw in the last video, fit perfectly to there. Um, but the back one, because it's got the, the entrance for the flue for the fire coming into it, um, I need to cut a little bit of a notch out of it because um, this one comes up on the end onto the curved bit whereas that one doesn't so first thing to do so that's where it's going to sit um, so you can see I just need to to take out just this little bit there just to allow the, the chamber to come down um, can you see that alright is that better? <laughs> the lights are good. I should have turned the other way around um, so I'll get that done first now I'm turning this around, you might be able to see me a bit better. Right, so I just cut that out with the, the angle grinder. I might not actually need that bracket now, um, if I've got this. So, stick it under and see. Oh, we can see that under there, but that's absolutely brilliant. I'm actually just going to replicate that um, on the other side, I think. It's going to be a lot easier than mucking them out, trying to weld the other bits onto it. Excellent, do not take long. So all I've done, just put them back to back and drawn a line on this one where I want to cut out. And they should be the same, or somewhere near enough anyway. You know what, they're not bad. I'm going to stick them underneath. And then, um, oh, that, that's the back one. This is the front one. Get rid of that now. I can do with an assistant though. Right, that one's in. Fantastic. Get it off the weld. Okay. And now for the other one. Right, so what I've done, I've put them in position and I've squared them up using my bench to square and clamp them in place. The reason I've done the, the metal that way is because I'm going to use this as a shelf just going to sit in the front. Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I might have to cut these down a bit yet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still working out as I go along. Um, maybe. Yes, I will. I'm going to cut these back just wide enough to have my shelf um, in and useful. I'll get it worked out and I'll come back to it in a minute. Right, we're finally getting there. Right, so I've cut them down now. Um, as you can see, the barrel, it sits solid in those dishes. I'll probably put a little bracket on it um, later on. So when it's in situ, I can bolt it to it as well, so there's no mishaps. But as for the balance, if you remember, I was concerned about that. It's not making any difference at all, this weight of this firebox. Even if I, I lean on the firebox, if I, to, if I put all my weight on it, I can lift it up. But Again, a, a couple of a couple of bolts in um, should be fine. I might have to move this one just back a little bit. Um, that'll do that job. Give me a bit more leverage that way. But it's got to have a big, heavy flue on this end as well, which will counteract that. So we'll figure it out as we go along. Um, but I think yeah, bolting it to the frame might be a better option. Um, but yeah, excellent. Right, I've moved from back a little bit, and now with all my weight, I still can't lift it, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this piece of wood now is going to go across the front there. Um, the clamps are there to just stop it from moving because these want to tip over at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do um, is pull it forward a little bit and then get two pieces cut and welded for each side. Um, the front and the back to make the, make the square and then I can lose this and we can carry on building the stand. Right, I've welded up the back one. I'm just about to put this front piece on next and then we're really cooking on gas.
Right, that was done with this on. I can get rid of this now. I've just had an afterthought. I'm going to put this little piece just on top there, just to stop the door dropping all the way back so you don't have to reach so far over the hot thing to, to be able to close it. But that's for later. Um, I can get this off now um, and then we can work on this. It's got to have some legs on it. Obviously, we need to determine the height that we want it. And then it's got to have another little shelf um, underneath. Um, for putting things on, obviously, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, fantastic, so yeah, it's coming along really well. I'm really happy. Right, we're definitely cooking on gas or charcoal and wood as it will be. Um, I've just put the stop on for the lid, so when we lift it up, it doesn't go any further than there. It's going to be lower when it's on its stand, so it'll be easy to reach. Um, excellent. The next thing, the final thing before we paint it, is um, we have two thermometers. You can see those. Um, <laughs> two. The reason we've got two, we're going to put one on each end at around cooking height, around the food height, um, so we can accurately monitor the temperature through the whole thing. A lot of places you just have them in the middle, stuck up there. It's not there. I've done a lot of research on this, and apparently the best place to put them is certainly on the flue end, on the exit end, but I'm going to put one on this end as well, so I've got a total visual um, thing of what's going on inside it. Um, the problem is, it's a, it's a 20 mil hole, I've just measured it with the vernier calipers for this thread, and I've only got a 19 mil hole cutter, so I'm going to cut a 19 mil hole through it, um, they might thread into it, otherwise I'll have to use a little Dremel or the die grinder, um, to just make it a little bit bigger. So, first thing, get the drill sorted out. Let's do it. So there we go. Thermometer's installed. Uh, fantastic, very happy, very pleasing. Right, I'm going to take them out again now. Take the handles off and get it outside, ready for painting. All the way. That's it, Right, with that out of the way, <laughs> um, we can get them with the base. We've obviously always got the top of it because we've made it upside down. Um, we can't wait to get this done. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, it should be finished well today or tomorrow. Um, so we'll have it open to do a burn before the end of the video. Um, and then we can cook on it this weekend. It's going to get some ammo, I tell you. Right, so while that was on there, we worked out the height that we wanted it at. Um, and I need to know flip this over, cut some legs, um, get them welded on. We've got four legs to put on, four braces to put around for a shelf. I've actually found enough um, decent floorboard, um, 21 mil thick tongue and glue pine to make a lovely shelf in it as well. So let's get on with it. Right, so my legs are cut and I've got them held in place. I've checked them all vertically, both ways, with these super strong magnets. And what I'm going to do, if you are new to welding, don't just weld them straight on. Um, I'm going to tack them on each end and in the middle there. But if you just start welding, um, the heat you put into it will twist them and pull them and you'll end up with them not straight. If you tack them first, 
then you can weld all the way around it afterwards without any issues. So, get the welder cranked up and get them done. So whilst Andy's making the frame, I'm just giving it a good wipe down so it's nice and clean. They so can get it painted later. Right, so it's all done, welded together. Um, I'm gonna now put a shelf in. I'm just gonna put two straight across um, there. Um, yeah, and then the other two, I'm just gonna put them inside this. Well, the other two across that way, I'm going to have to notch them out, um, as you'll see in a bit, to fit round the angle of the one that's going to go that way. Um, if that makes sense, it will do in a bit, I'm sure. I'll show you closely in a bit. So first off, get these two horizontals in. So for the side pieces, if you can see that, um, obviously I don't want to put it on top, because it's going to be a shelf and these need to be level. So what I need to do is notch out a square of here and down the back so that that will go in on top of there and sit level with that so that's my next job I got these in by the way I just clamped them in place use the spirit level that way that way that way and that way to level them up as you can see they're perfect the thing weighs a ton it's solid uh, right I'll get these final pieces put in then we can get our shelf done Right, so it's notched out, and you can see now that fits lovely on there. Pretty much. So we've got a level thing. Right, so one more to cut, and then I'm going to get them welded in, and then we can look at getting our shelves done. As Andy said, we're short of wood at the moment, and it is very expensive, so we're trying to reuse everything that we possibly can. This is the piece of wood that was down... Um, between the, the patio door, the French doors and the um, shutter in the utility room which Andy's now stoned up. So this is surplus to requirements. It's looking a bit sorry for itself because when we had problem with the flu um, it stripped down and um, discoloured it. So I'm going to have a go at cleaning it up. We only need about a metre off the top so this horrible bit at the bottom is not a problem. Um, it had all foam on the back which I've already cleaned off just with a scraper that came off no problem not going to be seen anyway um, so yeah I'm going to have a go at cleaning this up right so it's done it's outside we're in the daylight um, this is a piece of wood I'm going to use as a shelf on the top it's actually when I made the gate I actually planed it and sanded it ready it's the same wood it's 150 years old I'm just going to cut it to length and that's going to sit in there um, then we're going to use floorboards, TNG for the shelf. We've just about managed to scab it enough because Sharon's getting that cleaned up nicely. So let's, we'll come back to you when it's in. Right, the top one's in. Um, we've got five of our six in the bottom. Um, you can see the colour difference in that, but we'll, it'll age up in time. Um, we just need to rip one down to fit in the smaller space at the end. Um, and then we're ready to start painting. Right, it's time to start painting. Sam is going to oil the wood and I'm going to paint this black. Um, this 700 degrees Celsius resistant paint. We used it on all the fires before. We're not too concerned about the original paint that's on here because our fire upstairs is made from the same bottle and that's our temperatures of 400 degrees C we measured on that and it hasn't come off. So we're all right, we're good to go. So get it painted. Right, so it's all painted. Chris and Lillian from Tales on the Cave side are coming over um, to give us the kindly offer to give us a hand to um, bring it in. So here, <laughs> we've devised uh, um, what we hope to be a really easy way of doing it. With four of us, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, so, yep, yeah, they're on the way now. So, um, let's see if we can get it in. Okay. Okay, you all right? Yep. yep. Right. Uh -huh. Can you go first? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch your back as well, Come, Chris. I'm fine. Come this side of the pole. This side. You can. Can you lift? Yeah. That's this okay. one. Well done, everybody. That's it. Okay. Yeah, you know those rocks I was on about? <laughs> yeah, you're the only one who found them. Yes. Okay, and put it down there. You can drop that down now. Sure. Yeah. Phase one. <laughs> yes. There it is. A little bit more. All right, that'll do. I think. Yeah. Right, so that's you, you with me. Perfect. Right, so it's in. Um, thank you so much, Chris and Lillian. Tales from the Cave side, like I said before, check them out, check out the channel, they've got their own channel. They're restoring an old cave house uh, and a Finca building as well. Um, some challenges in, in store for them. Anyway, so it's here, the flu is on, it's, I've glued it in. It's nearly set. I'm going to add another piece, one more piece up there to take it above the, the level of the wall. Um, and then we need to put the handles on, the handle on here, the shelves in. But first I think I'm going to get a fire going in there. I might put the handle on the firebox first <laughs> uh, to make it a bit easier. And then get a fire going because we need to do a big burn out or burn in is it called of them for a few hours to get rid of all the nastiness and stuff that's in the manufacturing process. Now that's what you call a smoker. Right, I'm going to put the handle, I've prepared a fire. I'm just going to put the handle on with the firebox before I light it. Because it's going to get pretty hot, I should imagine. It's our um, almond handle that I made. Fabulous. Get him in, one in there. And the other one in there. Brilliant. Right, I'll get this tightened up and then um, get it lit. There we go. All I've done is made a little fire, put some sticks and some paper underneath. That hopefully will ignite the charcoal. When the charcoal gets going, what we do then is put lots of wood on. I have an almond we've got and different flavours, hopefully. Obviously, this is just the initial burn. Um, so we won't be doing anything fancy with it. I'm just gonna have a big fire, burn all the, the rubbish off. You can see the smoke coming out of the chimney if you can see that on there, can you? Right, I'll shut the door, it's going. We've got a little window so we can see what's going on in there. Excellent. If you couldn't see it before, there it is, smoke coming out of the chimney. Absolutely fantastic, it should be a great draw on that. Right, I'm going to get the other handle on, get the two temperature gauges in, and um, get the shelves in. Right, done, magic, it's working a treat. The shelves are in, the gauges are on, the handle's on, it's lit, it's burning. Um, it's going to take a bit of getting used to to control these two temperatures, but we should be able to do that with a bit of practice. Right, fantastic. Um, this is the first burn, remember. It's miles hotter than it should be, producing far more smoke than you would do if you were smoking something. Um, but it's working. We're getting it all cleaned. And um, we're hopefully going to be able to test it for real tomorrow. Tomorrow. Can't wait. Tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> we might even do an extra video, a bonus video, uh, to let you know how we get on. So, anyway, that's us for today. It's been a hard three days, but we've got done what we achieved. We're very, very happy with it, aren't we? We are. We think we are. Thrilled. Thrilled, thrilled, <laughs> you see. Thrilled. Um, so, when are we back? Thursday. Thursday. See you then. Thanks, Thank guys. Thanks so much for watching.